Our boys are wired very differently than us. And I think that's something that every mom and homeschooling mom has got to keep in the forefront of her mind. You are dealing with a different creature in many ways. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so glad you are with me this week and we have Dorinda Wilson back with us. And so many of you are already familiar with Dorinda. I know this because, well, you've listened to our podcast. Many, many of you listen to her podcast and many of you listen to our podcast because you heard us on Dorinda's podcast. I've been on her podcast a few times and she is just an amazing homeschool mama. She's a homeschool mom of eight. And th- though all of her kids are now out of school. They're all they're all into the adult world and she's got lots of them, eight kids. That's a lot of kids to try to balance and manage, but man, Dorinda and her husband, Daryl, they have done an amazing job with their kids. And so she just brings so much wisdom and experience and I'm always excited to talk to her. She's a good friend of mine and I'm thrilled to have her back on the podcast. She has a new book that just came out and it's called Raising Boys to Men. And as you know, I have two girls. And I don't really know a whole lot about the world of boys. <laughs> boys have cooties and they're weird and they smell funny. And girls, well, girls can be weird too, but girls typically <laughs> like smell good. Like you walk by my girls' right. bedrooms and they always smell like perfume now because I have two teenagers. And so it's right. like perfume and lotions and all that stuff. Even smelling like like good smelling shampoos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything has to smell good. And boys are not so much like that. So we're going to talk about boys this week. And so if you are a boy mama, you are going to be so encouraged. And if you're a girl mom, this is still one for you to listen to because what I am learning as I'm raising my girls is that as we're raising our girls, we're praying for their future husbands. And so like, I want to know what are we looking for and how do we train up our girls to be godly wives and moms who these godly men will want to marry. And so they both go kind of hand in hand. And so it's going to be a fun conversation. But before we get into it, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. If you're looking for a great biblical worldview curriculum for your kids, whatever grade, whatever subject, BJU Press has something for you. Check them out at bjupresshomeschool.com bjupresshomeschool.com and uh, see what they have. Talk to one of their consultants. They will help walk you through whatever the needs are for your family. You can do parent-led, you can do video-based learning, um, whatever it is that you are in need of, check them out, bjupresshomeschool.com. Also, thank you for those of you who continue to support the ministry of Schoolhouse Rocked. We are so grateful for you. If you are watching this video on YouTube, if you would like and subscribe um, to this video and then share it with your friends, that would be amazing. If you're listening to it as a podcast, just click that link, you know, click the copy link and share it with your friends so that they can be encouraged as well. Again, especially those mamas of boys um, so that they can be encouraged through what Dorinda has to share. Also, thank you for those who continue to support us financially. You guys are amazing and we are so grateful for you. If the Lord puts it on your heart to support our ministry, you can do that through our website at schoolhouserocked.com. Click on the donate button and you can do a one-time donation or a monthly donation. And we are so grateful for those of you who continue to support us financially. We are so thankful. Um, Anyway, without further ado, welcome back to the podcast, Dorinda. I am so excited to have you back with me um, this week. For those who maybe are not familiar with Dorinda Wilson, introduce them to yourself and your family. Okay, well, I am married to Daryl, and we have been married for 34 years. We have eight kids, five boys, and three girls. And we have, uh, well, number 11 grandbaby on the way. Number 10 was just born. So, wow. wow. <laughs> and we've been homeschooling for over 30 years. Um, so, that's that's really the bulk of my life right there. <laughs> yeah. Mothering, homeschooling, and now grandmothering. Yes. Um, yes. What what a beautiful life the Lord has called you to. So so exciting. Now, now tell me really quickly, because you know, I hear this, and I don't know that you and I have talked a lot about grandparenting, but mm-hmm. I hear that being a grandmother is like the most amazing thing because you get to spoil them and have fun with them and then give them back to their parents. For the sleepless a, nights and all yes, the hard stuff. Yes, it's a blast. It's a blast. Although I will say we watched our grandson for a couple of nights and there was one night that we were up quite a bit. And <laughs> um, I was very proud of us because, you know, we've been past that for so many years, but it was just, it was fine. We, you know, we just kind of kicked back into that same mode again. It's amazing how quickly it comes back. Um, yeah. But we, it was great to be able to to take him for those couple of nights while um, Luke and Julia kind of got used to the baby and got her on a little bit more of a, a good 
good sleeping schedule. But um, it is. It is a blast. It is so fun to see your grand, you, some of yourself in your grandkids and then also seeing um, your children parent. That's also uh, really a lot of fun. So yeah, it, it's great because you don't have to change the poopy diaper. You can volunteer right. if you want, which is a real yeah. blessing for mom, or you can just not. <laughs> yeah. So you have options. It's it's kind of great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so much fun. Well, you know, as you're thinking through your parenting years, um, like I said, and you, I think you said this, I don't know, I know I said it, you've got eight kids. <laughs> and of the eight kids, five of them are of the male species. <laughs> yes, they are. They're boys. So you have a lot of, boy, you had a lot mm -hmm. of testosterone in your house. You have we a did. lot of experience when it comes to raising boys. And so we're going to talk about that this week. And we've talked about this on the podcast, but I love that every time we do talk about raising boys or do an episode on this, like something new always comes out and, they're in, and these mamas need help. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, there's just no way around it. We need help to raise our kids today, especially right, right. in this crazy world that we're living in. Mm -hmm. So so let's, I, I, I'm, I'm not even sure where to start because I have so many questions. And it's so right. funny as I was thinking through like, what do we want to talk about? You know what the first thing that came to my mind was? What's that? Why do boys do weird and gross things? <laughs> like when I think about boys and I'm not saying all, no, 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 maybe I will say boys are gross. It little they can boys. be. It's true. Not always gross all the time, but boys just have a way of like making bodily noises that they mm -hmm. always think are hilarious and like wiping boogers on things and, and just doing things that just seem so odd. And right. I don't know. So I don't know that you could even answer the question, but oh dear, how do we navigate through boys who just do really weird things <laughs> that especially as moms are like, why? Why, why, right? why? Well, I think the first thing we have to always keep in mind is our boys are wired very differently than us. And I think that's something that every mom and homeschooling mom has got to keep in the forefront of her mind. You are dealing with a different creature in many ways. Yeah. And when it comes to the weird and gross things, uh, there's a couple of things going on. Boys love to press parameters. And just even if it's just for themselves, but sometimes it's a social parameter as well. It's just in their nature to do that because that's how they're wired. You know, yeah. as they become adults, they have up to 2000% more testosterone than wow. women. And so that's going to, that, and that's just one difference, you know, yeah. neurologically, they're wired very differently. Um, in my book, I talk about gray matter and white matter and, and uh, the difference between the two. And how um, I think boys use more gray matter. And it's it's really about what it comes down to is it comes down to um, being very focused, being able to be focused on one thing, but not doing multitasking well. And then the opposite mm -hmm. is true for girls. So just that's just one just very small example of the differences between boys and girls. So they love to, to test the parameters. That's one of the reasons they do the weird and gross things that they do. They're very impulsive as well. And that's mm -hmm. another way that they're wired. And again, Again, I love the way that God has has matched those little ones uh, to usually be with their moms most of the time. So moms can um, respect their 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 nature as a boy, but also slowly teach them to read the room, <laughs> teach them what's appropriate and what isn't, but do it in a respectful way. Understand that they're not doing it just to drive you crazy. They're yeah. well, some sometimes they are, <laughs> but not most of the time they're not. That is absolutely the truth. We we it feels like that sometimes, but that is not what they're doing. They're not trying to push our buttons. They're just wired very differently. And so it's at the very least uh, entertaining for sure. Yeah. And boy, <laughs> do we have stories to tell, you know, um, but, but they're just so much fun. They are so much fun. Yes, they can be gross, but they're so much fun. Yeah. You, you mentioned teaching them and training them in a respectful way. And I think that's mm -hmm. so important. And I really want to talk about that this week too, because it's, it, Boys require a different kind of respect than girls. It's not that yes. girls don't require respect, but boys require a different kind. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you even talked about multitasking. And I, I remember, this is so funny, when Garrett and I were first married, I remember one day coming home from the grocery store, and I'm certain he wouldn't remember this, but we came home from the grocery store and we had like all these bags of groceries to put away and our phone rang. And this was back in 1995. So we mm -hmm. like had a phone on the wall, you know, with the right, cord. Right, right. And um, <laughs> he didn't have Bluetooth or anything. And so he sat down like at the table to talk on the phone 
And I was like, can you help me put away the groceries? And he was like, I'm on the phone. No, and I, I was can't. like, and? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying to me right now. Oh, like, that's funny. You know, you can talk on the phone and put away the groceries at the yeah. same time. Like, right, right. But it was no, just so- I, maybe not. <laughs> right, right. And I remember thinking at that time, like, I don't understand why he's telling me that he can't talk on the phone and put away right. groceries at the same time. And so- Again, just realizing that there really are yes. huge differences when it comes to respect, when it comes to the way that they mm -hmm. work, when it comes to the way that they think. Boys and girls are simply different. And so uh, we're going to keep talking about this. I want to talk about, uh, we're going to take a break, but when we come back from the break, I want to talk about what some of the biggest challenges are um, that moms face who have boys, um, mm -hmm. maybe in contrast to those of us who have girls. So right. we'll talk about that. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and Summit Ministries. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Dorinda. Um, I want to talk about challenges. So what, uh, and, and I love Dorinda, I love that you are a boy mom and a girl mom. You've got three daughters and you've got granddaughters. And so you've really been able to see the difference between raising boys and raising girls. What would you say are some of the biggest challenges that boy moms face? Well, I would definitely say um, just their overall aggressiveness. Um, the boys tend to be very physical. And that's something that's hard for us to mm -hmm. relate to as moms. You know, um, I was reading in a book, and I mentioned this in my book, a book that I had read years ago, well, not the whole thing, but one particular chapter. Um, and it, the book was called The Minds of Boys. And it explained how when you and I want to bond or, you know, just grow closer, we'll sit down with a cup of coffee and we'll talk. Yeah. Well, for boys, what does that look like? It looks like beating the tar out of each other sometimes. <laughs> Just really the competition, the wrestling, the physical activity, um, that and, and them being on a mission together, overcoming something together, conquering mm. something together. That's what what brings them together. So it's it's just that alone, such a big difference. And I think also we have to remember that, you know, moms, we're not boys. And I think that's something that we have to continually keep in mind. We're wired differently than they are. And so we have to continually be cognizant of what they need. How do we nurture this this nature in our boys in a, in a healthy way? So how do we nurture, take that aggression and, and what do we do with it? Well, we redirect it. We put that energy to good use. We put that energy, we put that energy into a mission of some mm. sort. If you present um, something to them, whether it's a chore or whether it's schoolwork, as some sort of mission, it's likely you're going to get a lot better response. You know, it's kind of like, you know, mission impossible. You know, here is your mission, should you yeah. choose to take it, you know? <laughs> um, and then you could even do the thing where you say, you know, you've got five seconds to decide before this explodes. You know, boys love that kind of stuff. So I think that's one challenge. But another challenge is um, that that aggressiveness is not very popular in our, or very well accepted in our culture. And right now we're in a, a culture and church crisis when it comes to masculinity. Yeah. And, you know, we've been lied to for years and we continue to be lied to about a gender and masculinity. It's become trendy to hate men and maleness. And, you know, a lot of us have grown up with this kind of thinking. And so now we're having to somehow raise these boys in a way that brings them up to be godly men with biblical godly ma masculinity cuz mm -hmm. this is a problem also mm -hmm. is there, we we are seeing a trend of um of men and boys saying hey i know something's missing in my life and they're realizing that masculinity has been you know just completely downplayed degraded and all that and they're ready to take right. it back and of course if they do that outside of god's parameters yeah it just gets ugly and it becomes uh, the other extreme where it's toxic masculinity and i right. use that term loosely because people will call biblical masculinity, toxic masculinity. So sure. defining yeah. your terms is really important, but <laughs> there is- worldly to toxic Worldly, there yeah. we go. Worldly uh, type of masculinity. And, it, and so 
you know, as moms, we know there are differences, but we struggle to reconcile what we know to be true about our boys and what Mm -hmm. the culture and much of the church, not all of it, but much of it is telling us. And so what we have to do is go back to God's word and we have to go back to, um, just simple biblical masculinity and and try to implement that with our boys as we raise them. And one of our our key helps in this is going to our husbands. Um, this is something that I have weaved throughout the book because it is so important to understand your husband knows how your son is wired. He knows how he thinks and going to him for suggestions, for consequences, for direction, for even some direction in schoolwork what might be best for him um, is really a wise thing to do. I learned to do this years ago, and it was so helpful in in raising our boys. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, we we want to do a good job of this because we want to um, raise the next generation of boys to really make an impact for the kingdom. And that's only going to happen if we're willing to kind of push back against what the culture is telling us and what much of the church is telling us and go back to what God tells us about raising boys. Yeah. You make such a good point when you talk about uh, dads knowing how boys think. Mm -hmm. And I see that played out in my house in a different way. And that oftentimes with, with two teenage girls now, sometimes they'll try something on at the store or they'll, you know, come out wearing something and Garrett will say, not a chance. Like, no, you right. can't you right. can't wear that. And of course, my girls are like, but why it's so cute? And he will tell, he's like, you don't understand how boys think and how mm-hmm. men think. Like mm-hmm. they think so differently. And I didn't realize this either when I first got married. I never had brothers. And so I didn't understand how um how young men think and how old men think, you know. Right, right. Um, and it can be really dangerous. And so while these boy dads can help train up their boys to be godly men, they all, they really, it, it, it's perfectly true that they really do understand how boys think, right. whereas moms not so much. You know, moms right. are the ones exactly. who are like, Exactly, exactly. And you know, when you're saying that, it can be easy to maybe get the idea that, oh, they're just, you know, they're all perverted or they're all, right. no, God has put something in them and it is, it is good. And when it's yeah. directed the right direction, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that's the yeah. thing that we have to remember as moms of boys and girls, you know, um, when we talk about, you know, um, sex and things like that with our yeah. kids, we want to them to know that it is a beautiful God-given thing within the covenant relationship of marriage. And right. outside of that, we have to have things that we do to keep us from temptation and from tempting, as you mentioned. You know, I think that's so great that Garrett does that. You know, he's yeah. like, okay, nope, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so important. And um, I, I do think that a lot of boys and men have been made to feel dirty because that is how they're wired. Yeah. But I, I think that it's important for them to know that again, that this wiring is from the Lord. It's what they do with it that yeah. matters because it can be directed to a very beautiful, you know, covenantal relationship yeah. with their wives. And and just knowing that, even that they're looking forward to that, let that motivate them to not give into temptation before then. You know, recognizing that every girl is some is probably going to be somebody's wife. Um, she's certainly somebody's daughter sister, whatever, and just and to, to just teach our boys that that's to, to respectfully, uh, to look at them with respect, that kind of respect, and and then to know when to look away because yeah. there is a lot of inappropriate out there and it's, it's very, yeah. very challenging. And so, you know, moms and dads have a big job, a big responsibility in front of them to navigate our culture. But I will say, I go back to the fact that God made you for such a time as this. Mm-hmm. You can do this. And there are um, there are resources out there that can help you do that. And so I think that um, although it's a big responsibility, it's also a privilege because I'm yeah. telling you, I can tell you from where I'm sitting now, as you watch these boys become men who are responsible and honest and, you know, and kind, and yet they're, they're not afraid to wage war when necessary. Right. They're, you know, you see all of this fruit in your sons and you realize what an impact, potential mm-hmm. impact they have on the world um, if we raise them 
according to what God, how God tells us to, um, it is a pretty amazing and powerful thing. And I think that's exactly what the enemy knows. Yeah. And that's why he wants to discourage um, specifically Christian parents who are trying to raise godly children. So don't let him do it. Um, yeah. You can do this and God will equip you along the way. We don't know, you know, what we need in three or four or five years, but we know what we're do- we're what we're facing right now and he will yeah. give us what we need to do that. Amen. Amen. Whew. Okay. Well, we're, we're going to talk a whole lot more about this. And I want to talk in the next episode about some really practical ways that um, moms and dads um, alike can help their boys grow into these godly men, uh, because that's really what we want. We don't want just right. boys who grow into you know men who are hard workers. That's important. Yes. Right. Um, men of integrity. Yes, that's important. But men who really love Jesus and who are going to lead their families towards Christ. And Mm -hmm. so like, how do we do this in a very practical way? So we'll talk about that on Wednesday. Dorinda, uh, tell us the name of the book again and where they can find it. And um, it comes out tomorrow, right? I I think it comes out tomorrow. And so we're super excited about this book. Um, So tell us all, all the things. What's all the stuff we need to know about Dorinda Wilson? Okay. Well, the book is called Raising Boys to Men, and it's a simple, mercifully short book on raising and homeschooling boys. And you can find it on Amazon. You can also find it at my website, DorindaWilson.com. Okay. I would recommend getting it from Dorinda's website <laughs> instead of Amazon. No, I mean, you know, we, we purchase things on Amazon sometimes sure. when it's necessary, but I do know that for authors, typically they um, get a bigger return when they are purchased directly from the author. Uh, than through Amazon. So uh, so you guys check it out. We will put links to her book in the show notes. I'm so excited about this, especially for you boy mamas. Um, I know this book will be helpful. And as Dorinda said, it is simple and mercifully short. I love that about all of your books, Dorinda, that they're always short, they're easy reads, but so practical. Um, so thank you so much for writing this. Stay tuned to the very end to hear a clip of what's coming up next on the podcast. And again, you can find everything at our website, schoolhouserocked.com. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you back here next time. Bye. Education is discipleship, and this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. You know, there's something about the mother-son relationship, yeah. especially as they're getting into the teen years. They want to cut those apron strings all mm-hmm. of a sudden. And all of a sudden, they want to lead. I yeah. found myself in that situation so many Five times, times where <laughs> all of a sudden I realized I wasn't actually in charge anymore. Uh, Some yeah. one of them or more had taken over and they were kind of <laughs> telling us all what to do. And so I had to take it back and say, look, listen, boys, I love that you want to lead. I love that that is part of how you're wired, how God has made you. And someday he's going to use that and you're going to have a wife to lead and children to take care of and a household to provide for. This is not that day. Mm. And <laughs> I am not that wife. I said, I already have a husband and you're not it. 